The Japanese American National War Memorial Court means more to me than just just the um, marble walls with names inscribed on them. We consider it sacred, holy ground. Every name on that wall was somebody's close friend, somebody's family member. It's nice to see the names at least be remembered. I think it's important that people can see recognize and appreciate the sacrifices that were made to ensure our freedoms and right just to be American. We Niseis had a burden on our shoulders. The 442 became the best troop in the United States. There was no way we could bring shame on them. The Chinese made the last offense in the South. And uh, we, were, we were in full retreat, but we had to take the rear. And uh, they just overwhelmed us. Hank seemed to be like a magnet and attract a lot of fire, a lot of incoming artillery mortar. But we're pretty well protected, so we were either under the tank or inside the tank. There were two occasions where I thought I would die, and uh, the mortar rounds hit 20 feet to my left and uh, killed some, some of our men. There was no question that we were going to go in, no question that that if the time came, we would have to lose our life. The difficult part of being on that end of, of the war was, yeah, we wanted to be, maybe help the frontline soldiers as much as possible, but we recognized that we ours was purely logistical. The first time hearing a 122 rocket come right over your head was uh, quite an experience. <laughs> it sounded like a jet plane coming over. We must have lost about one third of our regiment in that ambush, yeah. It was 1968, yeah, it was the worst year of the war. 250 Americans on the average were being killed every week. And I was saved, I don't know why. I've always had a deep feeling for those that never returned home because because I lost my best friend. And I lost him because I asked him to join with me. Toro took the patrol out. They said it was a firefight when he got overrun by the Chinese. My friend got badly wounded, ended up in prison camp, and died of his wounds. Tommy Adachi, who uh, died actually in a, in a helicopter uh, incident. He was actually missing in action. We were on a patrol, we got ambushed, he got hit in the stomach, and I watched him die. A guy that I went to West Point with named Donnie Tiller, his helicopter was shot down and it was quite sad. There's me, Cliff Ishigaki, Roger Okamoto, Ken Kozai, and Kei Murat. Only Cliff and I returned from Vietnam. That's the saddest part, seeing people that you feel are your friends, then you'd have to write their parents and try to soften the description of how their son died. And a couple of times I'd actually lie. You know, the, the standard comment you hear that freedom is not free. Um, for ethnic minorities, I think, I think equality also is not free. I feel that it's imperative that if the government wants us to fight for them, that we should do whatever we can and even give our lives for it. I think that's, that's, that's a, a part of being a citizen of the United States. I want the Japanese American and the public to know that Japanese Americans died in the different wars and, and made their sacrifice for us. We, as, as a Sansei generation, stand on the shoulders of the Nisei in World War II. Um, 
they opened the doors to America for us. Uh, there was this uh, halo effect that I think the, the 442nd, the 100th Battalion and the MIS uh, really um, uh, established for the Japanese American community. They did what they did, not for themselves, but for their children and grandchildren. And again, we as Japanese Americans uh, vicariously bask in that glory. So the subsequent service of the Korean War veterans and, and Viet Vietnam veterans and those in the Gulf War is, is important uh, so that ethnic minorities and in our case Japanese Americans in particular are not only viewed as equal under the law but equal equal in the eyes of our fellow citizens. The legacy that the 100th, 442 and MIS provided me was that it, it afforded me a military career based solely on merit. When I learned about the death of my friend Leonard Vernon Todd, I immediately wrote to his parents to tell him that, that I had become good friends with him because uh, he did not look at me as Japanese. He just told me that he, he looked at me only as a Marine. The Japanese American National War Memorial Court was something that uh, I was involved in from the very beginning. I didn't, I stayed away from there. I didn't want any reminders. What you have to really think about is alongside each name, there's a mother, there's a father, a sister, or a brother. We as Japanese American veterans take it upon ourselves to ensure that we do our part. As Cicero said, to honor our heroes. It lets them know that their sacrifices of their loved ones are, uh, are not forgotten. We live in one of the greatest countries ever in history. And we have much, to, we owe a lot of it to those people on the memorial wall. The memorial court uh, and its importance to our, to our Japanese community, uh, Japanese American community. It's a tangible reminder of, uh, of the contributions, of the sacrifice of, of predecessors to, to allow uh, future generations of Japanese Americans to maybe not even be called Japanese Americans anymore, just to be called citizens, to be called Americans. Being Japanese American, it's not something I have. It's not something that I have to think about. It's something that you're. I do take ownership of. It's a choice to take ownership of it. Um, looking at those names on the memorial, you realize how many people sacrificed their lives and worked hard to give us the life that we have today. That contribution should never, never be forgotten. Uh, that's why we put up the memorial court. That's why the. It's important to us. That's why um, I, I want it to be important to future generations. To see the memorial is just a way of being mindful of that and not forgetting our past and remembering that we have what we have because of those people and the generations before us. This is our responsibility to make sure that those heroes are never forgotten and that they are honored.